I had a plan. After parking the car at the side of the road, I tricked my little sister Bree into getting out. I then led her into a patch of woods. Go on, close your eyes and hug that tree. It'll make your wish come true, I told her. I didn't believe any of that, of course, but my sister did. What would you expect? She was a four-year-old idiot. While she was distracted by the tree, I ran back to the car and told the driver to take off. It was the only way I could get rid of her. As we started driving off, I turned back and saw my sister running after the car, screaming and crying. Before I could change my mind, I looked back at the road ahead. In the rearview mirror, I saw the shadow of a huge creature creeping up behind her. Her screams echoed out, followed by the howl of what sounded like a huge wolf. I smirked. Finally, she was gone. But then the taxi driver turned towards me, and his face had completely changed. It was Brie? But how? She leapt on me from the driver's seat and exclaimed in her annoying voice, Let's play, Stella! Let's play! Her weight on top of me made me open my eyes, and I realized that it was all a dream. Well, mostly, she was on top of me, shoving her toy trees into my face. She'd been obsessed with trees ever since she saw the Wizard of Oz. Get off me, you brat! I shouted at her and pushed her away. She fell off the bed and started crying endlessly in that high-pitched, irritating voice. There was a little blood in her mouth when I checked if she was all right. Thank God, I thought it was something serious. She only had a chipped tooth. Seconds later, my parents rushed in and started confronting her. What have you done? My dad yelled at me. Gosh, relax. He was screaming like I'd killed her or something. That's it, Stella. You're grounded today, my mom said without giving me a chance to explain. Damn it, I wanted to go shopping with my friends today. Bree had ruined my whole day. I wished the dream had been real. Later that day, since I was grounded, I did the only thing that might bring me some joy. I watched Jason doing yard work from my window. Jason was the cutest guy to ever walk the planet. He lived next door and also happened to go to my school. But that day, bless my lucky stars, he was washing his Lamborghini with their garden hose. My eyes were wide as saucers when he took his wet shirt off and revealed his six-pack abs. Everything seemed to be in a slow motion as I drooled at every flex of his muscles. Stella, why do you watch that boy every afternoon? Is he your boyfriend? Bree said innocently, but very loudly, while pointing her fingers at Jason. Jason looked straight up at the window. I wanted the house to collapse with us in it. He probably heard what Bree said. I immediately ducked. But to make everything worse, Bree asked me why I was hiding in her loud voice. Ugh, I so wanted to strangle her. When I checked on Jason again, he had gone back inside his house. Oh lord, he probably thought I was a creep. When I was about to go to sleep that night, Bree barged into my room again, carrying her toy trees. Get lost, Bree! I pushed her out of the door before locking it. Stuff like this happened with her every night. I never got any peace. The next day at school, while I was hurrying to my first class, I ran smack into Jason of all people. Hey, Stella. There was a whole swarm of butterflies in my stomach when he grinned at me. I'm having a party this weekend and I was wondering if you'd like to come, he said as an invitation, and I just wanted to faint with happiness. I immediately said yes, and it felt like my eyes were turning into hearts. On the day of the party, I woke up so excited it was crazy. I was just about to pick out my outfit for the evening when my parents marched in and dropped a freaking bombshell on me. We'll be going over to your grandparents' house tonight, so you have to babysit your sister. Don't leave the house no matter what happens, my mom instructed firmly. I almost passed out with shock. I begged them to take Brie along, but they refused. Ugh! I was so pissed at first, but then an idea popped into my head. I could lock Brie in her room before sneaking out to the party. And then I'd be back by midnight. No harm done. The minute mom and dad left, I ran and got dressed. Then, before leaving for the party, I checked on Brie in her room. She was sleeping and hugging her toy tree. I was about to lock her bedroom door when she suddenly spoke. Stella? What is it? I asked. I love you, she said in a sweet, sleepy little voice. I was touched for a moment, but just for a moment. Then I locked the door. After confirming that the coast was clear, I hopped next door, anxious, excited, and flustered all at once. The smile on my face vanished when I entered the house. I didn't expect that I'd be the only freshman at the party. It was full of seniors, and Jason was busy with another senior girl. Oh my gosh, what was I doing here? The night was still young, but I wanted to go home already because no one was talking to me. I was like an outsider. Just when I was about to escape the party, Jason came up to me and said hi. I was immediately filled with excitement again. There was no way I was leaving now. Just as I was starting to enjoy my night with Jason, my mom started calling me. There were lots of missed calls, but I decided to ignore them. 
She probably just wanted to check on Brie. I excused myself just before midnight to take a peek at Brie in her room, just to, you know, make sure that everything was fine. What I saw left me horrified. Brie's bed was empty and her window was wide open. Oh no! I spent almost an hour looking for her in all the corners, closets, and rooms in our house, but I couldn't find her anywhere. I even looked for her under the sink and inside those large antique vases as she was so tiny, but there were no signs of her anywhere. She wasn't in our backyard or treehouse either. With my heart beating wildly in panic, I rushed outside to continue looking for her. But I was out of luck. Maybe she went to the party. I went back to Jason's house and asked for help, but I saw Jason kissing that senior girl from earlier. I was enraged. I tried to interrupt them by asking them and his friend if they'd seen Bree, but he just ignored me. What a jerk. I ended up crying after like an hour of searching for Bree in our neighborhood. Could my night get any worse? Should I call the police? No, I can't call the police. They would probably tell my parents and they'd kill me. My parents kept calling me to ask about Bree, but I ignored them. I was the only one to be blamed for this, and there was no way I could tell them what I did. I spent the rest of the night looking for Bree and crying. The next morning, I called my parents and told them that Bree had disappeared. As expected, they were furious at me. They immediately reported it to the police and the official search started. We posted pictures of her everywhere, in public places and on the internet. Her photo was even on the news. Even our cat Timothy had disappeared, and he was Bree's favorite pet. It felt as if Bree had really just vanished into thin air. The realization then slowly dawned on me in the next few days. I missed my little sister. I missed her annoying face whenever she came into my room to force me to play with her. I missed her irritating voice and her little fragile form that always bounced around the house. My parents were distant for the first year of her disappearance. Over time, they warmed up to me again when they realized that it wasn't my fault, at least as far as they knew. It was totally my fault though, and I was going to regret it until the day I died. Months passed. And one day, while I was jogging in the park, I noticed a familiar little girl being held by a big, muscular guy wearing black shades. Beside him was another guy who seemed to be scolding the girl. She was crying as they forced her inside a black van parked at the side of the road. She looked familiar from behind, and her voice rang a bell too. Oh my god, it was my sister! Help! They're kidnapping my sister! I yelled while running after them like a cheetah chasing a gazelle which caught the attention of everyone around. I grabbed a rock and threw it at the van, breaking their windshield to stop them from leaving. The big guy got out of the car and started yelling at me. Let go of my sister! I shouted back at him as I grabbed another rock. This girl is crazy, he said to the cops who were fast approaching. I was so sure it was my sister, but when the little girl popped her head out of the van, I realized I was wrong. Oops. The cops apologized to the men when we realized that they were actually her parents and she had two dads. I'm sorry, I said. I finally had to see a therapist because I felt like I was losing my mind. I was seeing Bree's face in every little girl I came across. After 10 arduous years, her file was closed, as there were no leads. She really had just disappeared. Thinking of her made me cry, especially whenever I remembered her last words to me before she went missing that night. Stella, I love you. Time passed so quickly. I finished college got my dream job at 25, and married a sweet colleague called Liam. The memories of Brie never stopped haunting me. My parents seemed to have moved on eventually, but not me. A year after my marriage, we had a cute little daughter named Lily. By the time Lily turned four, she started reminding me of Brie. They had the same facial expressions, and she was also obsessed with trees. She was like Brie's reincarnation. One day, Liam suggested we go camping because Lily couldn't stop talking about campfires. So after celebrating her fourth birthday, the three of us went to the woods. After reading campfire stories to my baby, as I'd promised, we then all went to sleep inside our tent, with Lily between us. In the middle of the night, I woke to the sound of howling. I turned around to hug my baby, but to my horror, it was only my husband beside me, and he was deep asleep. I shook him awake and shouted that Lily was missing. We both panicked as we rushed outside to look for her. We used our flashlights as we hunted between the tall, shadowed pine trees. I'd never forgive myself if something bad happened to her. Liam and I then decided to split up to cover more ground. Minutes later, I saw a foggy area at the end of the path I was following. The outline of a young girl standing in front of me caught my attention. I walked closer and called out my baby's name. I was sure it was Lily. While I was running up to her, another shadow appeared behind her. It was bigger and walked on all fours. No! I screamed when the creature howled. It was a wolf and it was ready to pounce on my baby. Mommy! Lily cried out in fear. The animal jumped, but before it could lay its claws into her, 
A couple of arrows flew from the darkness and landed in its head. The wolf collapsed, dead instantly. Lily's savior then stepped out of the shadows. It was a beautiful teenage girl dressed like a hunter. She picked up Lily and stepped towards me. My jaw dropped in disbelief when I looked into her familiar eyes. Bree? I blurted out. I couldn't believe it. I ran forward to inspect her face up close. I pinched myself to check if I was dreaming, but everything was real. It was really my sister. The color of her hair, her big expressive eyes, and that facial expression. I'd seen all of it before. How did you know my name? Who are you? She backed away like a cornered animal. Bree, it's me, Stella, your older sister. Don't you remember me? I tried to convince her, but she just shook her head. It's dangerous to roam the woods at night. Go home and take care of your daughter, she said emotionless. My head was swimming. I had so many questions, but she was so cold and indifferent to me. Tears started to stream down my cheeks as I recalled the hyper younger version of her who had been obsessed with me. The teenage Brie was the total opposite. You have to come with me, Brie. We missed you so much. I tried to hug her, but she just pushed me away. Liam and I followed her to a huge cabin where she clearly lived, but she kept on insisting that we leave her alone. She locked all the doors and windows to prevent us from entering. I decided to go home early in the morning and tell my parents about what had happened. They were shocked at my news as well. It was like a miracle to finally find my missing sister after 12 years. I went back with them the next day, along with some police officers, leaving Bree no choice but to open the door. My parents hugged her and told her everything, but Bree wouldn't believe us. After some DNA tests and more investigations, it was confirmed that she was really my sister. She told us in the police that she ended up in the woods after waking up at the side of the road, but didn't remember how. An old, childless couple living in a big cabin in the middle of the woods then saw her and took her in as their own child. As she grew up, they trained her to be a good hunter like they were and never brought her back to the city. Both had died years ago, and now she was living alone. Her adoptive parents told her that the city was a bad place so she never dared to go there. My memories are blurry. I thought bad things had happened to me and I didn't want to remember, she confessed. I decided to stay at my parents' house with Lily when they brought Brie home. One night, I woke up to the sound of a rustling somewhere in my room. I got up to look out of the window and screamed upon seeing a figure standing on a tree branch, staring at me with its bulging eyes. My parents came in and turned the lights on, only to reveal that it was Brie. Oh my god, Brie, what are you doing up there at midnight? My mom said frantically. I thought I saw a hyena. I have to kill it before it kills us. She looked so furious as she jumped in through the window. Brie, there aren't any hyenas here. I explained, totally confused. I was relieved when the door opened and Lily ran in. I found it, Brie! She happily exclaimed while holding my mom's cat, the new Timothy. Very good, Lily. Bree then snatched the cat from my daughter and tried to kill it, but we all stopped her and tried our best to explain that it wasn't a wild animal. We managed to calm her down and she fell asleep while Lily stroked her hair. Bree seemed normal over the next few days. She was slowly learning to get along with us, especially with my daughter. They were like the best of friends, totally inseparable. We were all spoiling Bree with delicious meals and beautiful clothes and I was helping her get familiar with the city. I had to be a loving big sister to her this time. One night when I woke up, Lily wasn't beside me. She must have gone to sleep beside Brie again. So I went back to sleep and didn't worry myself. When I woke up, I saw a note on the pillow beside me. Stella, by the time you read this, I'll be gone, and I'm taking Lily with me. Don't worry, I'll take good care of her, better than you took care of me. Don't bother looking for her because you will never see us again. You don't deserve to have another precious little girl in your life because you'll probably just leave her someday, like you did to me. P.S. I hate all of you, but especially you. The minute all the words sunk in, I screamed and the world darkened around me. When I came around, days had gone by. There was no sign of Brie or Lily. We checked the cabin and all the surrounding forests, but they were gone. And yet, I see them everywhere. On the TV, the internet, wherever I go. And every time I close my eyes, I see the faces of my four-year-old Brie and my four-year-old Lily laughing at me. They look like they hate me. It's been a few years now. I still send missing posters and messages to the local newspapers and TV channels. Liam and my parents seem to have truly given up, but I won't stop looking for them. As long as I live. And now we come to the 10-year mark. Yet another 10 years with another missing child. For the first time in more than two decades, I was finally ready to give up. Maybe I had no other choice. But then one morning, I got a phone call. I hung up, but I couldn't believe what I'd heard. Mom?